Dad's a legend, and so is his son. Fun show tonight. Welcome into my state of mind. I am Dan York. Good Friday evening, literally. The coaching Belials from Mount St. Charles Hockey Lore are my guests tonight. Uh, I have had uh, the two of them on here in the, well, not on the television show, first time on the TV show, but on the radio in the past. And full disclosure, I'm a Mount St. Charles parent. My kid is now an alum. Boy, time flies when you've had fun. So that's full disclosure. And I need to kind of apologize to a lot of the the Mount crowd out there who expected to see the Blyles a little bit while back, probably a week or so ago, but we had a little bit of a technical challenge and we had to postpone the airing of an interview that we did do a couple of weeks ago. So you'll see that coming up momentarily. But in the meantime, let's do our rundown. Oh my gosh, what a mess. The more you learn about Speaker Fox, the more you say, what? Uh, okay, progress, but I've got a running analogy for you. A, uh, a lesser take. We'll explain as we move along here, because it's not all it's cracked up to be. This was well handled by the state, and this is a special day. Got to make note of that. Let's break it wide open here, Steve, and see what we've got. Sloppy speaker. Holy moly. Did you see this headline? Look at this. Fox receives slew of corrections letters. It just doesn't get any better for Speaker Gordon Fox, who is now on the outs, of course, he is still elected. He is still $14,000 in part-time salary and $20,000 plus in health benefits, of course. But it's uh, apparent here that uh, Mr. Fox, for years, has had trouble accounting for his campaign finances with little trouble here and there and uh, a lot of sloppy response. Interestingly enough, I got this email from Target 12, Tim White and the team today, because I, I was talking shop with them and I was saying, you know what's really interesting about all this? The executive assistant to Gordon Fox has been responsive to the State Board of Elections, it seems, if you look at Kathy Gregg's story there in the journal, about, you know, mishaps, miscalculations, and misappropriations, and misunderstandings, and miss, 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 miss over the course of time. And she's on our taxpayer payroll. She shouldn't be working campaign finance at all. Why was she? And, you know, I've got a little indication. Here's an example of an email. It's not, I didn't post it for you. just got this handed to me where she's, you know, commiserating with the Board of Elections at 1023 on a given weekday morning using a private email address. But I can access my private email address from my office anytime I want, and so can you. So, whatever. So, this might be an indication that the Attorney General ought to wake up out of his Rip Van Winkle snooze here. Uh, that's the guy who, didn't, isn't he the guy who slept for a long time? Anyway. Uh, yeah, right, Steve? Thank you. Steve's coming. Yeah, that's the guy. Uh, uh, Mr. Attorney General, can you get in the game here and take a look at this case, for heaven's sakes? Anyway, what a mess. Next item. The uh, unemployment is down in the state. That's a good thing. Let me check our numbers. Let's make sure we know. Here's the headline. Yes, we're down this quarter from 9.3%. We've broken under 9% to 8.7%. All right, look. Let's not look a gift horse in the mouth. At the same time, Massachusetts is down to 6.3%, and all we're doing is drafting. Here's my running analogy. Have you ever been a runner? All you marathoners out there, you know, if you get behind somebody who's, who can break the wind for you, kind of draft, it makes everything easier. So Rhode Island is kind of drafting behind the rest of New England and the country. Here's the difference. When a runner drafts, he or she plans on making a move, like a kick. I don't think we got a kick because we don't got to move. But we can't keep drafting. I mean, I like that the number is better, but we're drafting because everyone else's number is much better. Hello? Big idea. The idea that we're going to clean up our reputational act. Something, please. What else? I told you so about this. Twin River numbers are coming in, and over the course of this fiscal year, it seems that while the place is cruising at about $3 million more than it did last year, the take is not very good for us. We have a headline, don't we? Sure. Windfall from table games falls short of expectations. Yeah, we thought we were going to get a whole lot more dough, but we're not getting it because the table games pay the taxpayers less money. Now remember, the VLTs, known as the slots, but they're VLTs, 
are really a commission operation. We commission Twin River to run that statewide game on the lottery's behalf. Regardless, we get a big chunk of the VLT money. We don't get a big chunk of the table money. They threw out some VLTs to make room for the tables, and voila, we're getting less money. Gee, it could have had a V8. Some of the blame is on the weather and conflicts with sports championships and the like. All right, well, the weather's getting better. We'll see. But this formula was never really net beneficial to the entire state coffers, although I guess full-fledged casino operations kind of buoys the whole thing. Look, bottom line here is that we really shouldn't be worried uh, about saving our economy on the backs of gamblers who need to spend more dough. It's a bad way to create a future. What else do I have for you this evening? I'm glad this, the, the State Department of Health did the right thing here. Here was a headline on this. This is uh, off WPRI.com. Dozens of wedding guests stricken with norovirus. The West Valley Inn is just one of those places, right? It's a place. Like everybody knows the West Valley Inn. Well, they did multiple weddings, and on one, one particular day, I guess some, uh, up to 70 people got sick. But a lot of rumor was going on, so the State Department of Health decided to do a press conference to let everybody know that this could have been, you know, dirty hands, not washing, gross, I know, but there's no indication that the food at the place was, was problematic. And that's good because, you know, if you don't make that clear, one bad rumor, one bad story can kill a business. And that business has been a staple business and shouldn't have to fall prey and victim to that. Everything is status quo and good. Excellent. And finally, this evening, Good Friday. Look, no preaching here from this pulpit. I am, uh, I have, I am among the leading sinners. But I'd just like to let you know that this is a night that you ought to pay a little bit of attention to if you hadn't really thought about it. Too many folks just go through Good Friday as if there is nothing different. Let me say, I used to get upset about this, but I don't anymore because as we commemorate Jesus' crucifixion and the Pope is speaking there, all Christians should understand that there was no big hype for Jesus when he was crucified. Everyone was going about their business on that particular day, just like most people go about their business on this particular day. So that ought to give you a little peace. Um, but know this, the truth is, there is no Easter without Good Friday. So even at this later portion of the day, take a minute, you'll feel better about it. When we come back, the coaching Belial's. Um, Bill Belial is a charmer, and he's still got the same vim and vigor. You'll enjoy this conversation that we taped a couple of weeks ago. Then we'll be back for State of Mind. Yours, stay with us. You know, when I, I look at, at the scenes of, of, of championship congratulations for Mount St. Charles, I know that there's probably a lot of you out there that are like, oh, yeah, okay, well, uh, another one. Full disclosure, as a Mount St. Charles parent uh, and volunteer, um, it is pure celebration uh, for our family, I can promise you. And it's not something you can take for granted, especially when you actually think about uh, having a living legacy you know, amongst us. And Coach Bill Belisle is certainly that. My friend, it is good to see you again. Thank you. Always a pleasure and honor. And David, it is uh, it is always a pleasure. Pleasure, man. This this is a story that uh, needs to be told perpetually and, and constantly. I, and, and, and I'd rather have you guys tell it. And once I get Coach going, uh -oh. once I get Coach going, right, we're 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 off and running. We're off and running. So before I get Coach going, first of all, congratulations, fellas, on another championship season. I I, I generally don't bring a lot of coaches in to talk about even at the high school level, I mean, it's really about the kids. You make it about the kids, but there's a, such a specialness about, about what you guys have been able to accomplish that uh, you deserve that, that, that congratulations. Let's talk about what happened this year. Mount St. Charles won its sixth hockey championship in seven years, mm -hmm. two in a row. Never gets old, though, does it? No, it never gets old, especially this year. Uh, what happened this year? Well, you know, we, uh, we defeated a very strong Bishop Pendrick team that had beaten us three times in a regular season in that first game of the, the finals, so four times in a row. So the, uh, the optimism out there in the, the Mount community wasn't very strong. But it, it, was, it was a, you know, it's kind of like, you know, at least in context, it's when, when the Patriots aren't winning, all of a sudden we expect championships, mm -hmm. right? It's kind of that way with Mount, right, Coach? That's right. A little bit of pressure? Oh, you better believe it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you did it in dramatic style because out of the best two out of three with Hendrick and at the end, you were backed against the wall in game two, right? Having lost yes. game one. Yes, we did. We were uh, two and a half minutes away from uh, 
losing the state championship. We were down a goal and we, we scored with a couple minutes left and then we won in, in overtime. So we were that close to losing it. And then it was almost as if the hockey gods let the air out of the balloon on game three because you pretty much dominated that game, oh, correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, we played well for, for, th for three periods, you know. Yeah. All good shifts, you know. And uh, I'm, I'm yelling, you know, yelling all the time. Good job, good job, good job. So fight them up, fight them up. And I tell you, we, we played well. And uh, they knew we played against a heck of a team against Hendrickson, you know, because they, they, never, they, they never could. And it, they always come back, and they, they, they always come back towards the end. And I said, don't forget, it's shift by shift. And until the horn blows, it's that last shift. You better get out there and skate 110% for Coach Belial because you're going to get it from Coach Belial head to head. Understand that? Yes, Coach. Yes, Coach. <laughs> so if anybody's wondering yeah. whether or not you're just completely running the show and he's got nothing to do with it and he's just got a figurehead that just kind of just kind of hangs around, I think we just got the evidence that that is not the case. That is not the case at all. You know, he's still the man in charge. You know, I... I fed off him for the last 30, 34 years working with him, and uh, I still do. You know, he's our, uh, he's our energy, he's our source, and that's where we find uh, uh, the pride from. And that's basically uh, what is our, our goal, is to please the coach as, as the, uh, his, his assistant. That's basically what I'm trying to teach, you know, teach what, what Mr. Bilal is trying to teach, and that is just playing for your school and playing, you know, for your teammates. What, what, what does it take? To please the coach, what do you got to do to please the coach? Have a good shift. Every shift, in other words, about 48 second shift, they better have a very good shift. For, uh, in other words, defensively, offensively, and then the zone coverage. If they're not, that's not a good shift. And I need 110 percent every time on those shifts. If they don't get it, they come back to the bench. You let up on you stunk on that shift. You stunk on that shift. And I'm not bashful. Yes, coach, I did, all right? So, in other words, then the next shift, ooh, I'll get that son of a gun. And next shift, they weigh 110 percent right there. And I come up, give them a high five. Good work. You, you listen to well. You listen well. In addition to the shifts. Yes. And hockey specifically, what does it take to please Coach Belial? In, like, their lives and the way they carry themselves. That's as important to you as the shift, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, and talk to me about that a little bit. Well, the behavior on, 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 on the ice, on, 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 on the bench, you know, and to the referees, you know. And you know how the kids are, you know, they, they get a, a little bad hit and they, they want to retaliate. I said, no, you take the hit, you know, but you give the hit. But you take the hit. Don't you tell re retaliate. Sometimes it's too late because, you know, by the time, so when, when they're on the bench and I go to like this, right there, right? And when they come to the bench, you miss the shift, you're going to sit on the shift right there. So they miss the shift. Sometimes the whole period, because, it's, in other words, they had two bad shifts, you sit the whole period. And David kept, hey, coach, let's, no, he's not going out there until he, he sits down for another, another shift. And by the way, it's, hey, coach, not, hey, dad. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, that, you never mentioned dad. You never mentioned dad. No, it's never dad. They've ne At I, home. I don't think the kids have ever met, see, see me say dad. Uh, he wants to talk to it's coach. It's coach. You walk through the, that arena, it's coach. Can he call your dad at home? No? Well, it's, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere along the line, business is going to be over. Coach. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's in between dad and coach. Right, good. Uh, Very good. All right. Depends if we win or lose. When we come back, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about you know the, the, the history. And we can't cover it all in, in just this amount of time. But there's, there's a moment that, that happened in this championship uh, uh, evening the other night. Just, really captured the, the whole thing. I'll talk to you about it when we get back. Stay with me. Welcome back. I have Dave and Bill Belial with us. They are the coaching tandem at Mount St. Charles Academy. Is nobody really needs to, he, they don't certainly need an introduction. Uh, but you still say he's the head coach. Yes. Because it's true. It's true. And I think if you saw the last segment, you can see that it's true. I mean, you're just not hanging around as some doting old guy that, that wants to look good on the bench. No way. <laughs> and, you're, and, 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 and nobody, nobody is going to dare suggest to you that your time has passed. Oh, we better not. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But right? That's right. You know, it, isn't it the isn't it the most incredible thing? It's the best. About this? It's the best. You know, we all we all love the coach. All the alumnus that played for him love the coach, and to, to see him here and beaming with uh, with pride uh, just makes myself, his teammates, his ex-teammates, and uh, his ex-players very very happy. And and here's the thing that I wanted to mention. I want to talk a little bit more about kids today and all that kind of stuff, but I don't want to end this segment without at least reflecting. So again, uh, I'm at the championship game. You know, my daughter just graduated. I'm texting her from school, and she's all excited back, back and forth about what's going on. But you know, at the end, after you guys have won, and Coach Belial comes out on the ice, mm -hmm. forgets to actually use the carpet. I mean, you know, he's because you're not as fast. You're going to admit you're not as fast on your feet as you used to be, right? Oh, no, no okay, way. good. All right. Well, at least we got that. But he comes out, mm -hmm. and, and the, the, the award ceremonies are happening. And, of course, the hockey ceremonies are really nice because all of the kids um, uh, shake the hands of, of, the, of the other club. Mm -hmm. what, I, I made comment on, on this on the TV show a couple weeks ago when, when the championship happened. What most impressed me about hockey and you guys and Bishop Hendrickson is that those young men at Bishop Hendrickson Every one of them made a point, not just to shake your hand because you were proximate to them. Every one of them came to give you congratulations yes. and a hug. If you have, if you appreciate the spirit of sport, it 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 takes your heart and just grabs it. It's a credit to Hendrickson. Sure is. It's a credit to the, every competitor that plays with you. They respect Coach Belial. They want to beat you. Oh, I understand that, you know. But they love you. Oh, I hope they do. Because <laughs> I get what along. What does that with, mean to you? Well, it's, it's emotionally, you know, uh, sometimes you know, when I hug them and I tell them, super job, super job, super job, you know. And uh, I get a little tears in my eyes. You know, it, they think I'm tough, but sometimes I'm not that tough when it comes to that, when it comes to other, other, other people. Because they're just as important as my players. They went out there, gave, they gave 110%. And they, in other words, they came out, you know, at the end, they're losing the game. But uh, they were out there and they gave, they gave in 110 percent. And I really tell them that how proud I am of them. That you played a heck of a game, kid. You were, you you could play in any game, any place at any time. And I says, you know, any time you need help, Coach Delai will help you any time. It's so special. Yes, it is. You know, we're only as good as the competition and the coaching staffs who we coach against. And that's what makes Rhode Island hockey so special because it is, they know the history, all the coaches do. They know Coach Belisle. They do want to be Coach Belisle and Mount St. Charles because, you know what, that's, that's the ultimate. They're usually there in the end. And when the effort's put forth like Hendrickson did, you know, as a player, as a coach, you shake hands because you gave your, your, your best shot. And you know what, we lost to a great opponent. And the most important thing is I get a chance, you know, to congratulate, you know, the man. And it's never how you've dealt with this. You just celebrate. Mm -hmm. you, you've never worried about your position on the bench. In fact, I'm, I'm sure you don't even want to think about that day. You no. know, it's it's a privilege to, uh, coaching for that school, especially coaching with with uh, Coach Belial. He's taught me uh, more than just hockey about life. You know, as a coach, you know, I, again, when excluding the father part. But you know those those high school years and your athletic years, very important to you. And we've been very fortunate at Mount St. Charles to have someone like Bill Belial teaching us. What's different about the kids today than back then? Well, today they think they know it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In all facets, right? That's right. And they, 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 it's so simple. They don't know the fundamentals, right? They forgot about the fundamentals. You know. In all sports, I think that's true. Yeah. Fundamental and hockey is so easy, but they figure you know they want to be the star of the team. They want to go to be a pro. Well, as a freshman, they want to be a pro. Mm -hmm. Wait, buddy, pro as a freshman, you got a long way to climb the ladder. You better start to <laughs> start being a sophomore and and, and go to go probably go to uh, prep school for a couple of years and then probably go to Quebec Major Junior League for another two years and you might be a pro sometime coming up. So I, I really, I don't tell them, oh, yes, you are going to be a good one. I never tell them that. And I never mention tonight, guys, you better win. I never use win in my 39 years of coaching. Really? What do you say? 
I want a good shift, shift by shift. I never met you Very better nice. win tonight, or you'll get it. No way. I need good shifts tonight. That's it. Guys, get it. Yeah. And I don't speak that long before the game, but they know I kind of yell at them, you know. <laughs> and they, they think, uh, well, he is kind of teared off at us. I'm not teared off at him, but you're better. Oh, yeah, you know, I got to tell you, though, if, if that's not a life lesson, mm -hmm. you know, married to outcomes, probably not a way to succeed. Right. Married to doing it right day after day, and no matter what your, your job, your avocation, shift by shift, day by day, that's how you build a winner, right? That's right. And the outcome takes care of itself. Yes. Congratulations on another championship. What is this, 32 out of 39? It, yes, thank you. What the hell happened with the other seven? <laughs> well, I didn't yell enough. <laughs> Dave, thanks. You're welcome. Coach, it's always well, a pleasure. Uh, uh, yeah. And an honor to thank have you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Your state of mind when we come back. Coach Belial gives us a metaphor for life, huh? Shift by shift. Here's your avenue to... Feedback, 228-1886, voicemail, email me at stateofmindamiratv.com. Here's an email or uh, a little bit of a, a Facebook post. Here you go. Her success will be our burden. That's John's perspective on the Health Source Rhode Island project and Christine Ferguson, who runs that. That's the Obamacare for Rhode Island thing. In other words, he doesn't like the Ob Obamacare program, I guess. Well, that's kind of where it goes. Well, We'll see how at least Rhode Island's performance has been amongst the best in the nation. Those of you who are running the marathon on Monday, stretch well. Good luck. Godspeed. It ought to be a very successful day. and We'll take note of it then. Happy Easter to everybody and, uh, and the Passover, too. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching My State of Mind. See you Monday.